Today we're taking a look at one of the highest base experience games I've ever had. In fact, it could be the most base XP I've ever done, but I just can't remember some of the previous games that I've played that have been really, really strong before I started making videos on this YouTube channel. Base experience, of course, is the experience shown at the team score. This is not about um, the experience that you gain on your ship at the end of the match. This is what the experience multipliers are all based off of. So the base experience. I'm sure you guys know that, but I thought I would just clarify. And it's in a Friesland, which is a tier nine. So this ship, of course, is an excellent gunboat. It does not have any torpedoes, and it really doesn't have a heal either. So like we talked about in the uh, Sherman review, the really important things to consider for a gunboat are for its survivability, you want speed, probably a heal, maybe even some improved uh, saturation like the French destroyers have. Friesland really doesn't get that. On the other hand though, it does get some pretty amazing smoke screens as well as a decent hydro, especially at uh, tier nine. Although, well, when you're getting radared, the Hydro isn't all that useful. <laughs> the USS Black is in that smoke screen, and unfortunately we did run into him at the start. So our Hydro-Smoke combination isn't the greatest. The reason I smoked there and didn't just free farm the Lepanto uh, was simply because the smoke screen was put up. I was just a little bit concerned over what was going to be in that smoke screen. So better safe than sorry, we use one of our three smoke screens there. And now this um, destroyer, the Black, has used its radar. So we have an overwhelming advantage now. Just because the radar is probably stronger than a Hydro, at least in the range, it's a seven and a half kilometer range radar, it doesn't last nearly as long. So now that he's used up his radar, he knows he has to get out of this position. And that's where we want to push in very aggressively to spot and hopefully take this guy out. Because it could be a very bad thing to leave a radar ship, especially such a stealthy destroyer with radar left alive, especially after they've made a mistake. So this Yamagiri and I, well, we decide to push in together. Not really communicating that, but the Yamagiri went for it, so I was like, I'm in. I love this uh, aggressive destroyer play, and we'll end up taking out the DD very quickly. Unfortunately, though, the enemy Yamagiri pops up from the middle. I certainly was not expecting this, and oh boy, do we have some torpedoes to dodge. These will all kill us in one hit, so we have to dodge them. That's why I'm not even shooting here. It is far, far, far more important to dodge these torpedoes. And we do that successfully. So now that the Yamagiri has also used up his uh, burst fire, we know he's on the reload. So turning flap broadside, really not that huge of a deal now that we know he's reloading. The burst fire could do a ton of damage, and it did do quite a bit to us, but we were well angled and managed to dodge a portion of it at least. Unfortunately though, the Hydro does go down, so I'm not able to Hydro him in his smoke and finish him off, but I'll just run away and hopefully retain some HP to go engage him a little bit later. We'll try and cap this zone, as well as farm out the Hanover that's pushing very aggressively. Now you'll notice we're up to 42,000 damage so far, which is decent, but as far as the most base XP I've done, or the most base XP I can remember doing, this isn't really the kind of game or the kind of start that uh, you might be expecting. And that's because base XP gets calculated a little differently uh, than what uh, the most damage we could possibly do is. It's based on percentage damage. So doing 100% of a destroyer's health pool is worth about the same as 100% of a battleship's health pool. So that's where all of this destroyer damage is adding up to our base XP, the same as if we had done about the same percentage of battleships. So realistically, the damage number in the top right doesn't have to be all that high to get a high base XP game. And that's what was so shocking, at least, at the end of this game. We're not gonna have a massive damage game, and yet the base XP is going to be so, so high. And I think that really shows that Wargaming wants to reward uh, focusing on some of the smaller health pool ships, not just farming the massive damage out of battleships. There's gonna be a lot more team play. You're gonna probably win a lot more games by focusing on destroyers, more key targets to contesting areas of the map and winning capture zones. 
Farming battleships is great, and I certainly do enjoy it myself. Those big damage numbers are always fun to get. But uh, winning games really does rely on doing damage to these key ships. And that also extends now into submarines. So now that we've controlled the A cap, I've pushed up into the B area, and there's two enemy submarines here that we have to worry about. Fortunately, I do have a Hydro, so I'm able to spot both of them. But you'll notice I wasn't spotting this uh, U-2501 next to me until he was within two kilometers. Well, that's even with a Hydro. I wasn't spotting him until he was within two kilometers. The only way to spot a sub currently at maximum depth is with a Hydro within two kilometers. It's a little ridiculous, and uh, hopefully this stuff is gonna be changed because currently I'm really not even fighting this UI element, I don't feel like. Um, I'm not really fighting what um, the U-2501 and health bar. I'm obviously not facing a ship or a physical object in the game. I'm fighting a UI element, and right now it feels like I'm fighting against the depth meter. Realistically, that's all that matters in this engagement, how low this guy is. Maybe the battery a little bit. That's really all that I'm looking at. This guy is sitting at 60 meters deep and is getting away from me. He's pretty quick. Uh, these submarines are very, very fast underwater, so I need to catch up with them. I've done a decent job aiming the Friesland depth charges. They're a little odd. They shoot out in front of the ship, as you can see. Uh, they're not particularly easy to aim because there's no reticle, there's nothing to tell you where they're going to land. And this is actually the first time I've ever used the uh, pan-European, uh, Dutch destroyer, whatever, um, depth charges. They are strange and it took me a little bit to get used to them. So we're going to try and follow the heading, the last known that this submarine was on following the oil slicks as well, and hoping, hoping, hoping that we can actually take this guy out with our next depth charges. And we do. So there we go, one submarine taken out, and now we're chasing the next one. Fortunately, I do know the next submarine is low on battery, and we're gonna use that to our advantage to hopefully catch up with him. We're spotted now, we know he's surfaced, and uh, there we go. Finally, he gets spotted, and well, since these submarines only have torpedoes front and back, at least on the American ones, and, uh, well, the German ones only in the front, we know if we circle around him, there's no possible way for him to deal with us. He'll dive just a little bit, but, uh, yeah, his battery is so low that he's forced to surface right away again. So we can just shoot him and take him out for, yeah, our third kill. And most of this damage we've done so far this game is to destroyers and to submarines. So there you can see how we're getting such a massive base XP, at least starting. We're still got a little ways to go to, if we wanna hope to have a really, really crazy game. Here I'm spotted. Of course, the Yugumo is pushing into us and there he is, smokes up and I'm not gonna shoot. You'll notice my AA is also turned off. I don't wanna give this Yugumo free shots unless I absolutely have to. So we're also gonna dodge the Richtoff and torpedoes a little bit easier since uh, he didn't have a great lineup on us because we weren't spotted. And now we do open up on the Yugumo since we are in Hydro range. I wanted to hopefully wait until I was within Hydro range to get Perma spotted because taking trades with destroyers that are already pre-smoked up and you can't see them and they can see you that's really not a trade that anyone's going to win very convincingly, even if it is just a Yukimo. And we're left on 7,000 HP. So again, the Friesland is lacking speed, lacking armor, lacking a, uh, <laughs> lacking a heal, lacking any sort of survivability upgrades, really, that a traditional gunboat DD would have. But really, it's this insane DPM good smoke screens and hydro that make this ship work. So I really do think Friesen's a great ship. It's uh, just a little bit clumsy. We're not quite able to dodge the CV's blind drop and uh, left on 4,000 HP now with two ships to take out. So if you're thinking of getting a free XP ship, I do think the Groningen, which is the replacement Friesland, uh, essentially the Friesland was in the European tech tree and then when the Dutch tech tree came out, they wanted to move it there, but then they didn't want to remove the Friesland necessarily from the European tech tree. It was a little confusing, so they essentially just copied it and called it the Ronigan in the Dutch tree. They're essentially the exact same ship though. They play it identically. So if you're looking at this gameplay and thinking, that's a ship that I could enjoy, 
Uh, I can definitely recommend. I think it's 1 million free XP. We actually had a conversation about this in the Twitch chat as I was playing this. I don't think there's going to be new free XP vehicles for a very long time. So if you see one you like, probably it's okay to go for it. I really do believe this simply because the amount of free XP given out has steadily increased over time. Certainly been some inflation in the uh, free XP market. And given these upcoming proposed economy changes, the way flags and camos are gonna be reworked, I wouldn't be surprised if they're going to wait quite a while after those proposed changes come through, whatever they look like. Wait until they've got the uh, free XP growth under control and then maybe release a few more free XP ships. Although some people did bring up that the Research Bureau is essentially the new free XP ships since uh, everyone that I know essentially just free XPs the Harugamo line to gain those research points every couple of months when there's that two times bonus to research points for a line. And uh, that's how a lot of people get their Research Bureau ships, essentially replacing the free XP only ships. So I don't know. I don't see free XP being all that useful for new upcoming premiums outside of that research bureau. So ground again is a great option. Friesland of course is excellent as well, but uh, you just can't buy it anymore. Coming up to the end of this game, I got a little greedy <laughs> as we're talking about economy and if this ship is necessarily worth it. I end up with what, 128,000 damage and I end up dying to the enemy Holland. Uh, fortunately though, my team managed to pick up the victory and yeah, 1.8 million credits. That should be a little bit of a tip off of how much base XP we actually have. I also didn't run the ultimate flags to get all of the uh, rewards. So there it is, 3,889, nearly 3,900. I don't believe, I can't recall, let's say that, a base XP higher than that that I've personally managed to achieve. I think that's primarily because a lot of times my big games have happened in battleships or cruisers where I'm farming other capital ships. I haven't really had matches like this where Essentially, all of my damage came from the small destroyers and submarines. You'll notice 130,000 damage or so, and only 40, 45k was done to large capital ships. Everything else was done to crucial destroyers and submarines. So that's how I think this uh, amazing base XP game managed to happen. I am very glad though that Wargaming rewards base XP in this way, going after the crucial ships, the destroyers, submarines, that kind of thing that are not very rewarding in actual damage output, but uh, are very crucial to winning the game. These are the ships that of course are contesting areas of the map like capture zones, flanks, letting your large capital ships know where is safe, where there might be some danger, that kind of thing. They're very, very important ships for winning games. And I'm glad Wargaming recognizes that and gives a an appropriate, I would say, base XP result for dealing with them. Um, I wish it would go a little further though, maybe a little more team play focused experience, maybe giving more XP from spotting, maybe giving some extra assisting experience from a destroyer smoking up a friendly cruiser, right? And then spotting for that cruiser. So the cruiser can deal damage safely. That kind of thing, if that were more rewarded, I think maybe people could learn the game a little quicker even. And uh, people would play more as teammates rather than the uh, solo damage farming kind of way that I and a lot of others tend to play. But in this one, I just happened to run into a lot of those DDs and uh, critical ships and we managed to come out on top. So a really nuts base XP game. And you'll notice the captain build, it's set up for, to be a greedy damage farmer. It's set up to be sitting at that 10 to 12 kilometers, even up to 14, I guess, with this build, right? And uh, farm those battleships. If I was going for the full destroyer hunter build, I'd get rid of main battery and AA specialist and I'd get rid of main battery and AA expert. So it reduces the range and the reload just a little bit, but instead we're gaining superintendent for extra smokes and hydros. Those of course allow us to survive longer into the late game, in, uh, especially in those knife fights, those close destroyer fights. And then I'd take extra concealment because 
7.1 is not the most comfortable into uh, enemy DDs. The upgrades, though, are pretty much the same for both builds, though, I would say. Reload is good. Concealment's good. Prop mod is excellent, since this is such a brick. Uh, yeah, Friesland is excellent. Honestly, if uh, you think you'd enjoy this, the Gronigan is the exact same ship. I think it's an excellent tier 9. And obviously, it can have some pretty good matches, e even into super ships. Two tiers higher, and get out some insane base XP, experience, free XP, commander XP, and of course, credits. Whatever you're lacking, uh, running a premium ship with a lot of consumable flags and camos can net you a lot of profits. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Um, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.